Ooh. That is a lot of instructions. My whole life's been alive. Oh no. Oh. Hello everybody, it's Barry here. Hope you are well wherever you are in the world. Welcome uh, to another kitchen gadget testing video, part of a massive playlist. So if you've missed any others, do check them out at the end of the video. And as always, keep the recommendations coming in. And also before commenting down below, as we've always said uh, before, saying that one that's not very good, blah, blah, blah. Some of them can be novelty, but others can help people in the kitchen with certain tasks. And it really can be uh, quite life-changing. We've got some really fun ones today. So without further ado, let's get on with the first one, shall we? Thank you, bless you. No, that didn't work. Uh, this is uh, a gadget today, the first one up. This feels like it should be in Harry Potter. Look you, uh, who are a brand that are notorious for sticking every language possible on the box. And sometimes, in fact, there's another gadget that I've got in my garage. The <laughs> instructions are horrendous, uh, but this seems fairly self-explanatory. It is basically a mold uh, for helping to make bagels. I believe it's made of silicon and there should be six in the pack. Uh, but what you can normally do is you'd make your dough and sometimes stick like the end of a wooden spoon through to create the hole and then basically shape your bagels this way but I believe this can actually be submerged in the boiling water uh, to, which helps to sort of give you that nice sort of crust as well on a bagel which will flavor with sugar so let's do it let's get ourselves a big pan all right that'll do a couple of tablespoons of sugar just like a nice low flame just to start the process so I already made some bread dough uh, and left it out overnight. It's had a really <laughs> slow proof, so I have no idea what uh, is gonna happen to these bagels. It is so yeasty in this kitchen, this smell this morning. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot I made that last night. So the dough is ready for the molds. But here on the box, you can see making the dough, blah, 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 shaping it into balls and then pushing it, pushing it down on the spike, uh, which then can then be submerged in the water. And, oh, I didn't realize that. That's amazing they can be baked in the oven still on the witch's hat. I'm definitely calling them witch's hat. It's kind of nice and self-explanatory. There shouldn't be much more. Oh, wow. <laughs> They're actually really nice and light. Hello. That's got a really thick manual as well. Oh, that's why. <laughs> that's why it's so thick. It's probably like, yeah, two pages in English. Brilliant. Oh, yeah, so they are saying to add baking soda to the water. I don't always do. Oh, I'll do that anyway. It could make us have like ginormous bagels or it could epically fail. But that is it. This thing, I've got six of them. I might as well put one on my head. That will actually, of course I want to put it on my head. <laughs> float in the water to help give it that lovely crust and then transfer it immediately to the oven. And we can top it in between. I'm just going to tear a ball here of, I don't know, like the palm of my hand. I don't know if that even feels like it's gonna, oh no, I'll bake it a bit bigger, go on. I want some big bagels if I can. We now sit it on there and hopefully the weight of it, oh, look at that. Drag it round. Oh, I'm gonna do one more, but that, I like how it's got the lip on it, that's awesome, is a slightly lopsided bagel. Let's just flour the, uh, stem of it a little bit just to give it some love in. I think I might have made that one too big actually. That looks enormous. You put it on your head and it sorts you into what house you're in. I'm a Harry Potter mega fan. <laughs> All right, it's nearly there. Question is, is it gonna sink to the bottom and then rise as it cooks? Or is it just gonna sink? Or is it gonna float? Let's find out. Mystery. Now you'd normally only put these in uh, for about two minutes. So let's go, let's, let's do this. Go down, mate. There you go. I want you to go down. <laughs> I had to help it. Why, what, what? Why are you not sinking? You should be fully submerged. I want you down there. If I do that anymore, like push it down, it's gonna break the dough. Go, it needs to be going down. I mean, the bottom half of the bagel is gonna be all right. Normally you would turn it over as it boils. Maybe that's why this was in a discount aisle. I can lift that out, lovely. The bottom part is cooking to help give it that crust. But this bit here is just not doing it. No, that's not what you want. You want to be able to turn it over. So even if I get a Chef Excellence wooden spoon Hello. Uh, and push it down. No, that is ridiculous. I had really high hopes for this one. We'll shove the ginormous one in. <laughs> we'll see what that does. So whilst that, th oh my God, <laughs> that's huge. Uh, cooks away. Ah, it's gummy, it's gummy. Um, oh, I've got another one. Ha, ah. oh, ah. Ah, okay. Now this side is noticeably firmed up, so we can put that back in there. <laughs> Once Princess Leia's done. 
<laughs> That's a massive bagel. Right, let's stick this one back in. Ow, 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 ow. I'm not a fan of this. This one is done now. At least the holes in the bottom can help it drain off, but I've done another smaller one here. But whilst it is still uh, a little bit damp like this, it's a good time uh, to put some toppings on it. So I'm gonna go uh, for some poppy seeds. The good thing is though, because it's so uh, delicate, it's staying on the mold so we can bake it straight on there. We're not gonna move it anymore. I mean, ideally we shouldn't have had to flip it at all, but it will do. I feel like the only way I can get it to work is if I'm lapping the water onto the surface, almost creating like a mini wave machine. Now, just as these cool down after their lovely session in the hot tub, they are look, starting to firm up and there's a very gummy outside, which is holding that shape on there. I think, I think this is gonna be okay now. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is hot and those drays are warm too. It tells me to put it straight on there though, because it's silicone. This is a bit different, folks. <laughs> it's like daddy witch, mummy witch, baby witch. Which one's gonna turn out best? Which puns? Right, well that's baking. Uh, next up is uh, OXO Good Grips Gadget. It's a jar opener that I've had in my garage for about two years. I don't know why there's a hole there. Oh, maybe it's for the, is that for the lid? No. Opening lets you see the jar lid. Ah, oh, that's, Aha. So we're giving it a little wash and a dry down. And when I tend to do jar openers, I uh, will normally get a few different size lids. So we've got some pickled onions, some gherkins, uh, and some honey mustard dressing, because I actually blooming love that stuff. We can see the lid. <laughs> we know it's there. I don't know why you need to see it. It's like the world's most confused magnifying glass. But these are, are not that sharp, but that is wedged in. Right, so I'm pushing it in quite hard and then... Ooh. The best jar opener I've ever done was one where you literally sat it on the automatic. It's on the playlist. Do check it out. Have a barrack on. You press the button and just watch it and it took it off for you. That was amazing. And that has helped loads of people. This is good, but it felt like it needs a little bit of help. Now, this has got a bit of a wrap around it. It's not really. Oh, yes. And it perished the wrapper. It just needs a little bit. I mean, I'm just going to just go quite casual. Slot it right on and then just go like that. You see that slides, you have to kind of keep that force there, which I think for some people might be a bit of a struggle. So you want to lock that in. If I just, oh, you cheeky thing. So now I've got a, a jar of pickled onions and some gherkins, uh, which I can use for this gadget. This I'll, I'll just drink in my spare time. By Chefin, this is actually the first of two Chefin gadgets today, is the fridge fork. As you can see there, it has a jar of gherkins there being pierced and stabbed. Uh, the only time I've ever used something like this is when Mrs. Barry's family at Christmas, they have something like that for their pickled onion jar, hence the pickled onions. It's basically you hold onto Santa Claus's bum and just plunge it in. Uh, it's, it's good. It's so much more than a fork, because what you do, we'll take the big jar, look, that, you think, how's that gonna fit? You pull this around like a big elastic band. Ugh! And then you can leave it. I mean, we haven't even got it out yet to see what it does, but you can <laughs> leave that in the fridge. So at any time you want to pull that out and take that out and plunge away, if it works, that's genius. So it's currently in its storage caddy, which I absolutely love. So I wonder, I haven't even taken this out yet. Oh, yes. It's literally just exposed like that. So a little bit of a, oh gosh. It's got these very sharp prongs on there because you get other ones where you have like a push button where it sort of goes down for you. That is <laughs> it's just, it's just Wolverine. That's literally all it is. Piercing a gherkin. McDonald's hamburgers has taught me well to enjoy a gherkin. The only problem you've got is once it's on there like that, you're gonna need another thing like a fork or something to push it off, which is why the ones with a button on the end to push will normally just go boom. So you can safely get it off without potentially Oh, stabbing your hand on that, because that, let me tell you, that is sharp. The only problem is it doesn't fit <laughs> where I would normally put pickled onions or jars of any kind, like right at the back there, without it bent. Uh, bent. Oh, there we go. But we can role play. We can go, yeah, okay. Oh, oh I'm really craving a late night feast. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just about held on there. It's a thing. It's okay. 
All right, I think we've just got enough time to do this one before the bagels finish off. Uh, the smelling and looking good. Uh, this one by Chef, and this is the other one I was talking about. It's called the Stalk Chop. Uh, cauliflower prep tool. It's basically like a rounded blade, and it's blunt. Okay, uh, it looks a little bit like one of those tools you use when you've got like filler on a wall to like make it smooth and smooth it out and stuff. Uh, but yeah, this is basically for what stabbing. <laughs> you can literally just be honest about it. That is someone stabbing a cauliflower. And I'm fairly certain you could do this with a spoon. This is how, I mean, there's no sharpness to that at all. We always end up with the most random dinners uh, after I finish doing a gadget video. So all this food will be used uh, wherever possible. I'll be having a bagel in a minute for a brunch. But if you are enjoying this video and you've not subscribed to the channel already, please do consider doing that. And also, as I say, don't forget to check out the rest of uh, the other gadget videos here on the playlist. We've done loads so far and there is an epic video. I think it's like 16 hours long of loads of them bunched together. But what it's saying is the sort of florets of uh, a cauliflower. So if we just go like that, to be fair, that's actually quite cool. It's almost like cutting down a bush because it's segmented. I mean, it's a plant, isn't it really? But you can go at it. This is actually really cool. You can go at it a root at a time. And as you go down, you are slowly exposing more and more of it. And you could probably do some sort of soupy thing with that. But am I impressed with it? Because I've just never done it before. Let's try it with a spoon. Ooh, it's just a little bit finer than a spoon. I just picked a spoon because it's got that curved edge on it. Mmm, this thing just, that's way easier. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think that's a bizarrely unnecessary gadget that does work. Like the bride thing. Whee! Ah, damn. I think I left these in the oven just a little bit too long. Well, hey, it's held its shape, hasn't it? Okay, so these have uh, cooled down significantly now. I think we'll start uh, with this one, which I, is my favorite. I feel like this is the way to do it, to pull it from here. Oh, there we go. Ooh, now that's a bagel. Hey, I'm gonna halve this one because it's my favorite. And then we have a gadget for clearing up our filling. So, my left-handed bread knife. I knew it was worth waiting to not have breakfast this morning. <laughs> so here I have some cream cheese and I am deliberately getting quite a lot on that knife because we need a messy knife for this next gadget. And I, <laughs> despite your perception, if I'm doing this right now, I generally only have Rice Krispies uh, for breakfast. I don't have salmon cream cheese bagels every day, but I thought, you know what? I'm making a bagel. I'm going to make the most of this. So a little bit of dill as well and that. Looks blooming nice. Oh, it's a lovely flavor combo, but the crust, the softness of the dough, the crust out. So we did actually get the bobbin to work. It's just a shame that we had to lap the water, but getting out of the oven and out of the molds there was an absolute doddle. So next time you're making a bagel, consider getting a sorting hat for it. These are actually okay. Before finishing up with quite a fun one, this by Joseph Joseph uh, is the blade brush. Don't know what it is from there too much unless you've seen the picture but if i go like that you can see it almost looks like those joke teeth that you wind up and go da, 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 da. or a double-sided toothbrush you see that and this is designed for when you're washing up obviously you've got your knives uh in your washing up bowl and there is that little bit of a oh i could nick myself with it or you just put it in dishwasher or you're just careful with it but that's where this comes in it's kind of got like this housing u-shape that is it's not really non-slip but it does have a little bit of friction there to stop you moving and it's designed for sliding sharp knives or, or knives and a spoon i've got a spoon just to see if it works i've got some uh chocolate spread so i'm just gonna ooh, a table knife for <laughs> some of the dressing and uh for the sharp one let's actually put some something a bit more stubborn on there a bit of golden syrup which is going to be a little tougher uh, to get off basically corn syrup if you don't have that where you live the other thing to show you is look it actually stands up uh, this end up like that so once you've done using it it should drain off like that or you can just hang it on the side of your sink we might have space to do that so 
bowl of washing up liquid. Hopefully you've seen the video already, but this is also a Joseph Joseph gadget that we ended up keeping. Uh, I did say to keep an eye out to see if we do, and we have used it for ages. It's like a caddy with a draining system here, which is actually really good. So if I bring this stuff over, so let's start with what I think is going to be the easiest, uh, which is uh, the dressing, because it's basically quite a lot fluidy. We'll get this wet. I mean, if I even stick that in, is that going to wash it anyway? Yes. <laughs> But we go up and down like this. Can you see? Oh, look. It is actually getting some of the dressing in there and you can go underwater with it. Da -da 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 -da. And that's actually pretty darn clean. Good start. Welcome to washing up with Barry. So this is where a big sharp knife comes into play. And the good thing is you actually can point the sharp end away from you. So that's got a little bit of cream cheese just that side. So let's just go like that. Just see what it's doing there. It's like a really angry set of dentures. Boom, that's done it. So the spoon with its curves. Oh wow, <laughs> that's amazing. Last up, the stubborn sticky golden syrup. Quite a, that's done it, that's brilliant. I think for us, that's actually a really cool little tool to add to our caddy here. I mean, it'll probably sit on there, will it? Yes, it will. Brilliant, and it will drain into that. Or we can just apparently stick it on there. Yeah, nice one. Last but not least though, uh, you might have seen this in the corner <laughs> during this video, a mini chocolate fountain. I have had this 1999 and that sticker looks like so old. I, I think this is one of the first batch of gadgets I ever bought and it's just sunk its way to the bottom of the box. I have about six boxes now. <laughs> But it's basically a molten lava chocolate experience. It's mini Willy Wonka factory in the kitchen. And that, who doesn't want that? 19.99, so a bit of a bargain. I am praying this works. I've never actually used a, a chocolate fountain gadget before. So let's try it. Wow, that smells like soil. That is a lot of instructions. <laughs> I'll look at them off camera. Uh, oh, it's got some sort of tip. Is that it? Is that the spout? That can't be it, surely. That's nuts if it is. I think it is. <laughs> right, UK plug, good times, good start. I guess it's just gonna rotate and feels very cheap indeed. And there's a three-pronged triangle thing. Oh, does that house that? I think it does, look. Oh, solid. I bought a kilo of chocolate. I don't think we're going to need anywhere near that amount. And just to show you, there's these little grooves here. I guess that bottom umbrella is going to go over that because if it drapes into there, it's just going to fill it up and not come out. There's a motor, just turn it, and then a second switch for the heat. So um, I better read the instructions a minute. Any highlights, I'll let you know. The only the standout notice so far seems to be to not plunge it in water whilst it's on. Um, I mean, I don't think I'm going to do that. Melt the chocolate using a double boiler or a microwave. What? I never knew that. I thought I could put chocolate chunks in here and it would slowly heat it and go round. Ah, oh, my whole life's been a lie. I thought chocolate fountains just existed like waterfalls. So we've got to melt the chocolate beforehand. It's then going to go spiralise up. It's going to hit into the pool here and pull it up and then coat down and then repeat around. Okay. I thought I bought quite a decent quality chocolate, but I think I'm going to add the oil anyway, because if this seizes, that's going to stink. <laughs> All right, look at that, nice and smooth and glossy, and I kind of feel like it wouldn't seize, but um, I'm gonna add some of the oil. It says to do about a tablespoon, so there we go. That's making it nice and fluid, actually. I just hope it doesn't separate. <laughs> Put too much oil in, you could end up like frying it. Is there a light? There is no light. Oh, that's warm, yes, okay. It now says, to pour in our chocolate, okay? Okay, I'm getting quite a lot of that in there and a teeny bit on my work surface, that's fine. I'll let the heater just warm it for just a couple of seconds longer. So I think we now go for it, okay? Two minutes with the motor running, it should go up and pull it up to the top, ready? Oh, that's so fun. Wasn't sure whether to expect to get like a full, like cloaking consistently all the way around. I could probably put a bit more chocolate in. 
Oh, there we go. You see how that's coated? That, I don't know if that made the difference there, but that is... <laughs> so it says to turn this off for like 30 seconds to let the air run through it. Do you know what would be amazing? Would be a cigarette lighter version. So if you say you're like a, a, tra a tradesman, like a plumber on his lunch break, I'm just going out loving the car, just going to lunch rather than eating sandwiches in his van. He's there, we'll plug it in a cigarette lighter, chocolate fondue. <laughs> the only problem though, it didn't come with any bamboo skewers. Luckily, I've got one of these. Oh, please don't nick my tongue on this. <laughs> Stab my tongue after all this. Be, be careful. Mm. <clears throat> That's amazing. Super fun, super cool gadget. I mean, I have got a lot of work to do, but I think I know what I'm doing for the rest of the day. Oh my gosh. There we go then, folks. I think the thing I didn't like the most today was the jar opener. I feel if that had like a trigger on it to grip it, that would work really well. The one that caught me by surprise was the cauliflower tool. I thought that was actually generally stabbing a cauliflower has never been so much fun. So don't forget to check out the rest of the playlist if you've missed them already. Do let me know any gadgets down below that you've seen on your social media platform of choice. And don't forget to follow me there. Uh, and of course, check out the other videos here on the channel. And I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye. Check your level player, no matter what your style, the kitchen's for me, Simon's moustache, goatee, maybe all three. Alright. Bonus scene. I know you guys are going to want me to do this. And the reason I'm not giving it away is because I intend to take this to Stuart's house, or if he's coming to here next time. And I wish to do a Willet chocolate fountain or fondue with Stuart. But as a precursor to that. Oh no. Oh. Ah. At first, that sugar coating the chocolate took the edge off that vinegar and then. Wow. Oh. I might regret this. They were both kind of sweet at first, the chocolate was overriding and then gradually the chocolate wears away and then you just suddenly hit this vinegary spank. Um, if you've got any suggestions for Willet Chocolate Fountain with Stuart and I, let me know down below and um, make sure they're legal.